next month, John asked me something. It's a weird question. He wanted to know what it's like to be an adult. So, uh, a t shirt. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I thought, I thought, because <laughs> I thought, because he played Lazarus, I thought it was suit the, uh, suit the occasion. I like so, listen. It. So first of all, correction of the uh, John on the Hall. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's a very different film for you, but at the same time, I couldn't help feeling that the character kind of felt like Dexter when he was with Harry quite a lot during kind of when he was mm. younger. It really kind of brought me back to that. Was that something that kind of drew you into this film, maybe, or maybe why they they got into um, it? It's nothing I thought about explicitly. Do you do you mean like maybe the tables were turned and John yeah, was like Dexter and, and they, Dexter. yeah yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. I, you know, it's a, we shot the movie when we were on set. Like the hole was built on the very same soundstage that we ended up shooting uh, in Massachusetts, of all places. In the, in the, it's the same set, the same place where we built the set of Dexter's cabin for the return to Dexter. All I don't right. know what cosmically that signifies if anything but um, <laughs> um i didn't i didn't think about that i thought about um you know i i really liked the idea of of playing a a, a sort of normal regular person uh, to whom something really strange was happening uh rather than playing a uniquely strange person right um and I loved the script. I loved how spare it was, how much silence uh, I knew would ultimately be in it. Um, I, um, I felt like the, the character of John and the story of the film was um, in its way very timely. Uh, there's something about what he does that I don't know. When, when I think about the character I played and his father, I think, you know, he's shocked to discover that he's waking up in this hole, but there's some part of him that isn't completely surprised. Yeah. I mean, without, with, without being able to pinpoint it, he totally understands what yeah, his I mean, son has done. You say that, but at the same time, you're very quick to kind of point, I don't want to give anything too much away, but you're kind of quick to point the finger elsewhere as if it's someone else's. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Oh yeah. No, I think he comes, he comes into a conscious awareness of these things. I mean, initially he's very sort of desperately and, and somewhat pathetically trying to discipline his son and trying to run the show and trying to hatch a plan and telling everybody else um, what he needs them to do. And it's, you know, he, he looks ridiculous because he's lost all his power mm -hmm. and he never really had it. You know, that whatever power he thought he had is probably a bit of an illusion anyway. But um, yeah, I think John's, what he does to his family is, is, um, is confounding and something maybe they'll never understand um, fully, but it's also arguably at least a, a really outside the box form of um, family therapy, maybe. I was just going to say that because my son turns, he turns 13 next month. So I was, yeah. I really, it kind of it just really took me by surprise. And it really just, I mean, I feel like I've got a really transparent relationship with my son, but you just never know. And I'm, I'm always, yeah. I just hope he doesn't get into drugs. But then you see this film and just the simplest, like any simple kind of curiosity and all hell can break loose. You just don't know what's going to happen. It, it just really, kind yeah. of really opened my mind a bit there. Yeah. It, seem, it, it even seems like John is along for the ride. You know, he's, he's, he's acting in a place of his own will, but it, it seems like he's being driven by, if anything else, just the desire to feel something real and to give his family an experience of something real, you know, mm -hmm. as, as messed up as it is. I mean, you said that, that you really you appreciated how spare the, the, uh, the script was. That at the same time, I mean, obviously that's a great, it's a great thing for an actor because they can kind of get to break free from the, the chains now, if you will, and, and kind of go with where instinct takes them now. But at the same time, that must have been quite a, um, quite a daunting thing to, to kind of let yourself into, no? Yeah, I mean, you certainly, yeah, because 
you want to have a, 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 a vital sense of this family um, and you want to be able to, to, to sketch uh, a, a portrait, uh, a character who, who feels like he has dimension and nuance. Um, so yeah, it's, it is somewhat daunting, um, but I had such a sense of immediate confidence in Pasquale's vision for this material um, that I knew that he would take great care to, to have an environment on set that allowed us to just just be uh, in in the space and um, you know sometimes sometimes when you're on a set you can have an experience of a of a scene and and not be entirely comfortable that it's being captured <laughs> yeah. but with him I, I I felt like he would he would manage to 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 capture whatever to capture all the good stuff. <laughs> Sorry. It's a very slow burn film, but I feel it works. It needs to be the slow burn film. Yeah. I mean, did he did he specifically go out there to kind of film longer shots than usual to kind of create this idea of almost like this kid's almost kind of feeling abandoned and his days are getting longer and longer? Well, I mean, the fact is I we weren't there for 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 so much of you know so much of the film that was all just Charlie either on his own or with the people he's interacting with um, while his parents are in the hall, his parents and sister are in the hall. But um, I think a lot of it was, um, you know, I guess when we got in the hall, the camera was very much with us, but so much of um, it, so much of the film was shot with really long lenses. Right. So it was easy to sort of just forget that the camera was there. Um, you know, we were just a family um, sitting through another largely silent, awkward dinner. And uh, it didn't really, um, didn't really have to um, contend with uh, a camera being up in your mm -hmm. face. I mean, something else that was kind of surprising to me was the fact that when you were in this hole, you it almost you almost kind of take it for granted that you're down there, and it's almost like a team building exercise in a way. And you kind of there's certain moments that are almost like comical in a sense. That was quite a surprise. To oh me. yeah, was that in the script from the word go? Um, it certainly seemed to be like tonally leaning in that direction at times. You know, um, I mean, it's an absurd situation, <laughs> and um, and I think. Yeah, and I guess that's what I mean when I say the family therapy. You know, he 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 forces his family to probably experience a sense of bonding and togetherness that they hadn't and and wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and um, I think, I mean, there there are comic elements early on um, having to do with, at least in my character's case, a, a complete just denial of the reality. Of, the situation yeah. and the, um, but um yeah ultimately i think they all in their way uh give in to being forced to surrender to this absurd circumstance and uh once they do they get out <laughs> Mm -hmm. I also felt a little inkling of insinuation of maybe a nature versus nurture thing going on there with the mother and Son, was that something that was in the air when you were filming it at all? Did you talk about that at all? Um, you mean um, in, you, just in the basically sense because that... the mother was the mother was on some kind of medication, and it kind of right, was, right, right, right. A, a sensation that that we that was trying to kind of get at that maybe. Well, at least I felt that. Um, I didn't. I didn't myself think about that that wrinkle, but that's interesting. Um, She seems, her character, you know, seems much, you know, and this is maybe a, a prototypical, prototypically feminine versus masculine sort of take on this circumstance and more general take. She seems much better able to um, surrender to the chaos yeah. of this, Definitely whereas, whereas, uh, 
<laughs> Brad is very much trying to hold on to some sense of order. Um, yeah, it's 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 really you know that that last scene I think is really great. It's so similar to what we originally see, but so fundamentally different. It's hard yeah. to uh, to know if they what do they go into family therapy? Do they never speak of it again? It, yeah. Do they call it just that that time in the neighborhood? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah, know yeah. Uh, how it's yeah. dealt with moving forward. That leads me to my next question because obviously it's it's very open it could you could you could kind of think about it in any way you could maybe put this a go to um to therapy or just keep it as the elephant in the room no but at the same time at the end of the last season of dexter kind of people were complaining that the same thing happened you know it's it, we did we got a sense of what's yeah. going on with dexter so how are you feeling right now well it's been a whirlwind so when you actually tied the, that last season up was it done and dusted for you, or did you kind of once once these people on Twitter and everywhere started complaining about it? Was what did it start kind of was it always always in your mind to kind of bring it back maybe someday because of what people, what the fans were expecting? Um, it was always in my mind as a possibility, um, independent of people's dissatisfaction with the ending, um, and independent of my own dissatisfaction. <laughs> um, because the character was still alive and the series proper ended in a way that was very inconclusive. I think it, it, it was an immediate and ongoing, um, it wasn't like a constant preoccupation, but, but this, yeah. this thing that would come up and it came up a few times in different forms, different ideas. Uh, it just never felt right. It never felt worth doing. It felt like, oh, let's just leave it alone. But um, I think the what changed and, and led us to actually moving forward with a revisitation of the character and his new world um, was that a lot of time had passed and that sort yeah. of provided storytelling opportunities primarily um, having to do with the fact that Harrison was a full-fledged young maybe not quite man but it's getting pretty close you know yeah, and, yeah. And, um and and what, what would that be like if those two guys um cross paths again this is my life i am a passenger a wolf among sheep And obviously the right script came your way and then but then once you you got back onto setup i imagine when you're preparing just before you got back on set did the dark passenger suddenly was he there had he been there all the time or was it kind of did you have to kind of really kind of get get back and maybe watch uh, binge watch the whole thing before you could uh, <laughs> do it again <laughs> no i didn't i didn't binge watch but um <laughs> he was still there he was still very much um available and and um you know, sort of his idiosyncrasies were still um, were still there in the hard drive. <laughs> uh -huh. But I mean, coming off the back of this season where, I mean, I, I wasn't dissatisfied with it, but a lot of people were, they weren't happy with it. That must, you must be really kind of concerned what's going to happen when people see this and how you're going to bring some people back from the previous years that, I mean, some of them oh, yeah. get and we know they're coming back. So that's, that must be really, yeah running through your mind right now, especially. No, it was, yeah, it was a scary proposition. Um, uh, is this something that people will welcome? Will they resent it? Or they're like, oh, I'm done with you. You, you broke my heart. I don't want to see you anymore. Um, I have been, you know, I think for the most part, people, people's um, disenchantment at the end seems to have been, um, for the most part, overwhelmed by their by their sense of goodwill and enthusiasm about finding out what the hell happened to them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think more than anything, it was just people were sad to see you go. More than anything, I think. Most yeah, of the criticism was just basically they didn't want Dexter to end. I think more than anything, really. Yeah, yeah, and if and if you were going to go, give me give me some sort of clear sense of catharsis yeah. rather than what. Monster 
Chris Walken on this. I might still be a monster. But I'm an evolving monster. Before I go then, um, I'm, I'm really interested to know what you, I know, I know that kind of the last couple of years you've really kind of dived into your music. Because I know uh -huh. you, you obviously did Lazarus, no, not too long yeah. ago. And then I think from the musicals that you've done, you kind of got involved and you did, you got out, I think you released an EP and then you, you filmed it, you recorded a long play. And then I think you were just recently, you said you were working on another one. How's that going? Yeah, we have another, we have another one that's ready to be mastered actually. I'm not sure when we'll release it, but, um, but we have a small tour planned. Um, we're leaving in late November, going to the UK for- All right a good number of dates i think one show in ireland one show in kiev and then some shows in germany um that'll be over the course of probably three or three and a half weeks um mm -hmm. if if everything holds together yeah. you know <laughs> and um yeah this has been amazing completely unanticipated um really unplanned development um uh it just started out as, as um, I don't know, an experiment or just something for fun. But um, things started happening and continued to happen and we were writing more and more songs. And um, yeah, it's it's been really, really fun. Uh -huh. And I mean, it's the perfect moment to go on tour because everyone's just, well, they just can't wait to, yeah. uh, to get back onto yeah. a concert hall. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, listen, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I wish you the best luck with the film when it comes out uh, tomorrow in the UK and the tour okay. and Dexter as well. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. All Thank right. You. All the best. Take care then. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a good day. Bye, Alan.